there is always provision for the backward people that I came all the way from Rongara as a 300 kilometer away from Silo. Today? Uh, yesterday, sir. Oh, yesterday, okay. I think therefore, sir, I just came to speak this, therefore, I think I yes, may have please, please. more time. Sir, I rise to support the motion of thanks of the governor address. And I'd like to express my sincere thanks to the uh, governor for highlighting the achievements and the policies of the government of the past and the future. So our state is going to commemorate the 50 years of our statehood on next year. As the first Chief Minister State, Meghalaya State was a gift, was a Christmas gift of the Prime Minister of India. Because the bill to pass the state was passed on both the House of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha on 24 midnight, 24 December midnight of 19, 1969. So last two weeks back, I went to one of the very, uh, very remote village where I went to see the implementation of Jal Jiban mission. And uh, I met a one, one old man. He said to me, very surprisingly, <coughs> he is very happy. Mr. Emily, I'm happy with your government, but I'm, I'm not happy with, with our former, former MP, P.A. Sangma. I said, why? And this old man said to me, because our lad P.A. Sangma should have met born our humble chief minister, Conrad K. Sangma, 20 years before. If he could have born 20 years before, he could have become chief minister 20 years before, then we could have all this facility, all this development, the road, the water connectivity, schools, and every, every activities that this government has been doing. Sir, so this is the voice of our people. And I'm extremely grateful to this government that we are doing ex excellently well, sir. Sir, as we moving to achieve 50 years of our statehood, on the 25th of last month, there was a program, a road to 50, at Sizu. There. The many photograph has been displayed of the past for last 40, 49 years. And I'm very surprised that many of the Siju from my area, from uh, I mean people from my area at Siju, they were happy because most of the photograph and most of the people are from either from Bakmara and either from Siju. So sir, Siju has found in the history of our state. Sir, today I'm privileged and happy to represent the, uh, the, fifth, the constituency which represents the first chief minister of our state. That is, in 1972, it was 57 Siju LSE. Sir, today, in his memory and in his recognition and the mark of respect, I would like to request this government for creation of new CNRD block at Siju South Karhas because we deserve. So, if we talk about law and order, the people, if we go to the history of our state for the last 10 to 15 years, the people of our state, the children, the daughters and the sons used to say before, if my father goes away from home, we don't know whether our father will be written back home alive or in the coffin. This was a situation in the law and order 10 to 15 years back. Sir, sir I'm happy today as we're going to celebrate the 50 years of our statehood. The law and order in our state is very perfect. 
And it's, it is very peace and harmony. And the law and order situation in our state is the best at this time, sir. Sir, second thing I want to talk about a border issue. So on every session on the floor of this house, we have discussed and debate on the issues of interstate border with Assam on every items of the on the floor of the house. Though we have debate and discuss for the last 49 years, we could not decide. There was a when we have this, the border issue should have been the first subject to address, but we could not do it in the last 49 years. So I'm shifting towards the international border. We should learn from, our, from the past and should address in the future. Sir, I represent the border area constituency. Out of 100 and uh, out of 40, 444 kilometer international border, South Korean share almost 150 kilometer, where my own constituency share almost almost 90 kilometer. Sir, I I saw a man running away towards the Bangladesh from the jungle from the Indian side. I asked. Why this man from Bangladesh came to India? But the people say to me, Sir, these people from Bangladesh, they came to us India, crossing the border illegally to buy our lemon, our jackfruit, our vegetables. Sir, buying and selling of all the small, small items is not illegal. But since, because of political separation, it's become illegal. So I want to tell this house, we have the market across the border. We should take this opportunity to make market towards the borders. So this Indo-Bangla border in my area, Rongara, Bakmara, Rongara area, sir, this has become the hot topic for last 10 to 15 years because this area has been used as a corridor for all illegality, for kidnapping, for movements of militancy, for all kinds of illegality, sir. And it may be even, even more in the days to come. Therefore, sir, I would be happy, sir, the purpose to address all this issue in the near future, to make things straight across the in the border area, sir, I think the proper seven battalion headquarters to be set up in South Korea, especially in the Rongara, the Dambuk area, sir. This is very appropriate and it will address all kinds of uh, illegal activities along the border. So, before independence, our people along the border used to go to Bangladesh for education, for medical treatment, for business. And it was prosperous. After the separations, we cannot go for all this, for all the facilities now. Therefore, sir, why not we do the reverse? Along the border, maybe in Bakmara, we should have a first class hospital that the people from Bangladesh come in for treatment. We should have first-class educational institution in the Bakmara along the border so that the people from Bangladesh come and study in India. But sir, we need a system. Therefore, sir, I would be happy if the integrated check could be set off at Bakmara so that the trade and business and for tourism, for all purpose, that could be, we can get this, uh, this facility. Honourable members, you have two minutes, please. Sir, at last point, I want my heart always connect with the education department. I'm happy, sir. This government has doing tremendous work to improve the education sector, to construct a new building for lots of primary schools, secondary schools, and the colleges. 
So since my heart always connect with our primary school education, I want to make one small observation with, with regards to non-government uh, non -government primary school teachers. I'll just make a point about my district. In 1995, 100 and, 157 teachers were appointed by the government of Meghalaya. In 1995, 31st January. And out of this, uh, in the August 1995, the taking over of district council school has been taken place. And out of 157 teachers has been posted to, has been deputed to teach in this district council school. From that onward, these 15 numbers of school, uh, I mean, these 15 numbers of teachers, which is appointed by the government, has been deputed, posted to teach in this district council school. And since then, this 15 number of teachers has been considered as the non-government, uh, non-government teachers till today. But sir, there is a separate, there is no any separate order. There is no separate appointment. There is no separate, there is no any new appointment order for these teachers. But please, still, sir, they have please, been considered as a, as a uh, non-government non uh, teachers. Therefore, sir, I would be happy if this education department could consider all this. Sir, at the end of my speech, I'm extremely ha happy today that I could see the light of the, all the, what has been committed as has been promised by this MDA government, at the first day of the governance, we are seeing the light of the day. So, with this few notes, I conclude and take my seat, sir. Thank you. Our next member is um, Adilbat Norum.